and welcome to our online workshop on using Blackboard Ally to support accessibility in your courses. The topic for today is going to focus on the implementation of the Blackboard Ally tool, which provides online students, faculty, and staff with more accessible content. And I use full of diverse students with unique learning abilities, and Ally allows students more choice in a format that works best for them. The best part is that this is automatic. So in this workshop, we're just going to discuss how Blackboard Ally generates alternative formats for students to download and gives instructors some feedback on how to improve the accessibility of their course materials that they post to Blackboard. I'm your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers, and I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I actually earned my PhD from NIU in 2016, and I've been teaching college English for 14 years and I've been um, a faculty developer at NIU for over three years now. Um, and if you have any questions at any point throughout, um, you can post them to the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, and I will address them as they come up. Or if you'd rather wait to the end of the workshop, that's fine as well. Um, so I hope that we all explore, um, enjoy exploring this topic today. And so just let me know in the text chat or you can um, turn on your microphone. You know, what's your department or division? What's your role? What are you what are you hoping to get out of this workshop? Why did you sign up for this? Great, so wanting to review your course and make sure it's accessible. Great, excellent. Um, so something that I'd like to do uh, with my students when I'm teaching online in a synchronous setting is I like to do a little bit of a check-in. Um, and this kind of helps me gauge how my students are doing, um, how they're feeling that day. So I know, okay, maybe they put a sleepy face, they might not be super responsive or they might turn out, not turn on their microphones, they might be more involved in the chat. Um, so if you want to, you can share an emoji of how you're feeling today. Again, it can be any of the emojis that are available. There's a little emoji icon underneath the say something um, area of the text chat. Great. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that emoji. And so our workshop objectives. So by the end of the workshop, um, we're going to be able to define what Blackboard Ally is, explain how it operates, um, convey how students can use Ally, and then also explain how Ally supports accessibility and inclusion. So NIU is full of diverse students with unique learning abilities, as well as a range of abilities. And providing them with more accessible original content means that they can choose formats that work best for them. For example, they might choose HTML for improved reading on their mobile phones, um, electronic braille for the visually impaired, and audio for learning on the go. Um, and Ally automatically scans your original content and it performs a series of steps to make that content more accessible to our students, even without us doing anything. So to support NIU's commitment to accessibility, diversity and equity and inclusive environment, um, Do It has enabled Blackboard Ally in all of our online courses as of the beginning of this year. Um, Ally provides students with alternative formats of the files in your course that fits their device, their needs, their learning preferences, and it also helps you to assess the accessibility of your course content and to make improvements over time. So something that you don't need to do is go in and get overwhelmed by the sheer volume of, of 
things that are quote unquote wrong with your, your course materials and feel like you have to fix everything all at once. That's gonna be very time consuming. But as long as you make some adjustments here and there, and over time make your course content more accessible, once you've made it accessible, it's gonna remain accessible. So then you can focus on the next thing. Um, Ally provides alternative formats for students based on their needs, whether that's due to a disability, um, as you know, we have a lot of students who have disabilities, sometimes they um, disclose those disabilities, sometimes they do not disclose those dis disabilities um, to receive accommodations. So you might have students who, who have disabilities who don't feel comfortable seeking out accommodations, um, and this will help them as well. Um, but it also helps students who are, for example, using a mobile device for their coursework or their preference um, for how and where they learn might be more suitable to using an audio file, for example. Um, and those formats are made available with the original content. Your original content is not modified. It's still there. Um, so students can find everything in one convenient location. They can access your original file or they can download load an alternative format. And the best part is that we don't really need to do anything and that's already created automatically with our content that we upload to Blackboard. Um, so we don't have to do anything to create those alternative formats for our students. So let's just um, do a brief overview of Blackboard Ally as a tool. So over 800 institutions around the world have adopted Blackboard Ally, which is amazing and we're one of them now. Um, over 62 million courses have been processed using Blackboard Ally and over 2 billion content items have been processed. So that's some pretty hefty numbers there. Blackboard Ally helps us to improve the accessibility of our course materials. So as I've mentioned, there are alternative formats for students and courses. Um, and there's easy access for those formats that meet our students' needs. They can download a tagged PDF, an HTML, EPUB, electronic braille, audio, beeline reader. Um, it's automated. There's no configuration needed from the instructor. There's also alternative formats for everyone via Blackboard Assist. So if you go into Blackboard, you can go to Blackboard Assist and you can upload any supported file type to generate alternative formats um, for yourself uh, or for, for others. Um, and it also gives us accessibility feedback. Um, so we get some visual indicators for content accessibility. We have a course report on accessibility of all of the materials in a single course. Um, and then we also get guidance to improve the accessibility of each one of our course files. So here are just some examples of a variety of needs and maybe some appropriate alternative formats for those needs. I won't go over each one of these. Um, but I can share something with you in the chat here. So here is, and I will share this afterwards as well in a follow up. But here is uh, some information on alternative formats for you if you want some more detailed information on those formats. But you can see across the top, we've got electronic Braille, we've got audio, we have OCR uh, PDFs, we have tagged PDFs, um, HTML, which is great for mobile reading, EPUB, if someone's using an e-reader, um, a translated version, which we actually don't have access to. We don't have that turned on. Um, but that is one of the options that Blackboard provides, and we, you can toggle it on and off. And I think they're looking into um, perhaps allowing for us to turn that off for specific courses. So I think that's something in the bigger picture. I'm not sure quite how far along um, in the pipeline that is to be able to turn that off for specific courses, for example, like a um, a foreign language course that where the instructor may not want uh, translated versions of things to be available if their student's assignment is to translate that. Um, so that's why we don't have it turned on yet because of, you know, some sticky issues there. But perhaps, you know, down the line, we will be able to turn that on if, if there's the ability to 
kind of piecemeal turn that off for individual courses. Um, and then B, line reader. <clears throat> so here's another um, little list of needs and the alternative formats as well. Um, and I've just crossed off the one at the bottom because we don't have that enabled for the translated version. So alternative formats, they just provide greater opportunity for everyone to access information they need in a way that they need it. Um, and with those alternative formats, all of our students can meet the same learning objectives using resources that are built to target their individual needs. So what is Ally? Um, it's a product that integrates seamlessly into Blackboard. It focuses on making digital course content more accessible. As the instructor adds course content, it passes through this accessibility checklist and it's scored and machine learning algorithms perform this structural and visual analysis of that document. Based on that analysis, Ally is able to generate, <coughs> excuse me, able to generate alternative formats for students that are more accessible and to provide the faculty member with feedback on how to ensure that future content is as accessible as possible. So the concept of alternative formats for all learners improves the overall student experience with alternative formats that provide students with, with choice, added flexibility that comes with that more personalized approach. Um, <clears throat> it also automatically increases in awareness um, and provides detailed insight and guidance to us uh, faculty members who are uploading that content on how to improve the accessibility of our content. So what, what in particular about this document needs improvement and how can I do that? So what can Blackboard Ally do for you in particular? So this is the process that's involved in the conversion of content to alternative formats. So you're, the instructor adds the course content to their course, that content passes through this accessibility algorithm um, that performs this analysis, alternative formats are generated, the instructor gets some feedback, and then there's also institutional reporting available. Um, something that I mentioned was the course accessibility report. So you can go to your um, content market and <clears throat> you can find that accessibility report there. And this is what you'll see when you access your course accessibility report. Um, you'll see the files for your course. You'll see the types of issues that are the most common, how many issues you have, um, and you know the different levels of, of issues there. So you can choose based on this. So instead of kind of going through your course and going into your content modules, um, you can go to your course accessibility report and see, okay, I have you know, this type of issue. I can correct all of this type of issue at once and kind of focus on it from there rather than trying to do it piecemeal. Um, and that way, you know, you can focus on all of one type of issue at a time if you want um, and kind of knock that all out. For example, you know, your PowerPoints, your PowerPoint files maybe are missing, um, are missing alt text for images. So you can go through all those PowerPoints and add the alt text for your images um, and then kind of bump up your accessibility score from there. The one thing that does not, um, and I should mention this, the one thing that does not um, get scored is video at this time. So you'll have to kind of go through and look at um, video content yourself and make sure that it is accessible to students. So um, for example, if you're linking to a YouTube video or embedding a video, does it have captioning? Um, that's something that's important to have with video that you have closed captioning. Um, and that's something that the Disability Resource Center can help you with as well if you create files. Um, but also if you upload your video files through Kaltura, Kaltura will auto-caption auto them for you, and you can edit those captions within Kaltura too, 
and then you can um, embed that in your course so that you can ensure that your videos that you create have captioning. So here's what the accessibility feedback on files means. Um, so if you got a red gauge there, that means that it's got low accessibility. It needs help. There are some severe accessibility issues there that might uh, impact students being able to access that material. Medium is kind of like a orangey, burnt orange color. Um, that means you've got like 34 to 66% issues in accessibility. It's a little bit better, but the file is, you know, does need more improvement, somewhat accessible, but not completely accessible. Um, hi, <clears throat> you're almost there. The file's accessible. More improvements are possible, so you can go in there um, and still make some more improvements. And then there's a perfect score, 100%. Ally didn't identify any accessibility issues, but, but further improvements may still be possible. So allies might not catch all of the accessibility issues. So it's not, you know, a panacea for accessibility <laughs> issues, but it will get you very close. So making a fix, when you find that there's an accessibility issue um, and you want to fix that issue, you'll click on the gauge next to the file and it, you can, this will pop up. Um, it'll tell you what exactly is wrong with the file um, for example, this one has uh, insufficient contrast for text. So the titles here are in sort of a gray color against a white background. You know, someone who has um, a visual impairment may not be able to, to read that. So that's one issue that you want to, to address there. It will also flag, um, you know, if there's, if it's a, a, a like a red color, um, because you know people with um, certain types of color blindness not be, might not be able to see it. So there's there's some different issues there that you might see when you're going in to make fixes. And usually it'll tell you, you know, how can I? Why is you can see there it says why is this? Why this matters? And you know how can I fix it? So you can click on those links. You can find out why that matters. So you can understand. Um, which I always want to know. I want to know why does that matter. Um, I want to understand, you know, why that's an issue so that I can inform myself. So I click on that, figure out why that's an issue because, you know, it might not be accessible for this reason. And then how can I fix that? And it'll give you some steps for, for how you can fix that content. And then if you fix the content from within this um, view, um, then upload it here to this particular one. It'll show that as you having made a fix to content in your course, um, and that will improve your course's accessibility score overall. So we'll take a look now um, at the instructor view of, of what it looks like when you're encountering Blackboard Ally in your Blackboard course, and then we'll take a look at what the student sees, because that's always a question too. You know, I can see this, can the student see that? So here's an example of um, an accessibility score indicator next to a file. So this is a PDF file and it's red. Um, the accessibility score is low. So we would click on that icon, that accessibility icon to improve it. And then you would see what, what I showed you before. Um, <clears throat> So with those files with low or medium scores, Ally's going to provide you with that information about the issue. And it's going to give you some step-by-step -step guidance on how to fix that. So again, click on that and then this will come up. This is an untagged PDF. So how do we tag a PDF? Um, it'll explain that. And that's a common issue, untagged PDFs. Um, and then this is what it'll look like if you're perfect. So we've got <clears throat> A perfect accessibility score here is green. It's all the way to the right. Um, and if we click on that, it'll tell us, hey, you're perfect. And there won't be any suggestions for improvement there. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's perfect. Like I said, sometimes, you know, there might be some other minor issues there that um, Ally isn't catching. But um, you're, you're pretty close there and, and you can be confident that students will be able to access your content. Um, so again, the higher your score here, 
the fewer the issues there are. Um, and here's what the alternative formats icon looks like. So it's an A with an arrow. That's where you can download alter alternative formats. This is what you'll see. It's right next to the gauge next to that file. And if you click on that, then you'll see what alternative formats are available for you to download for that file. So it's not just for students. You know, if you want to download an alternative format of, you know, a, a file that you've uploaded, you can do that as well. Um, so it'll show you what's available for that particular file that you've uploaded. And it may be all of these things. It may not be all of these things that are available, depending on the file and depending on the file's accessibility. So what does the student see? The student does not see that gauge. So if this is the student view um, and they see this file and then they just see that um, alternative format icon and they might not know what that is. Maybe they'll get curious and and click on it. Maybe they won't. That's why it's really important that we tell students what that is and why that's important. Just kind of be, make them aware of that at the beginning of you know, your class. Um, and they'll be able to see that in all of their Blackboard classes that have files in them. And then when they click on that, they'll see the alternative formats that are available for them to download, just like we do. So again, the big question um, that we've gotten from faculty is, do students see the accessibility score indicators? And the answer is no. Students do not see the icons that indicate the accessibility score of particular content. Um, they don't see the scores themselves. They don't see the accessibility feedback. That's only visible to the instructor. Students only have access to download those alternative formats. So you don't have to worry about that. So which file types uh, does Ally support? Ally is going to check and provide alternative formats for any visual or text-based content that you've added to your Blackboard course. Um, they will check for PDF files. They'll check Microsoft Word files, uh, PowerPoints, OpenOffice or LibreOffice files. Um, and those, if you um, have students who need free um, Word processing programs, OpenOffice and LibreOffice, or two of them, um, they will check uploaded HTML files, they will check image files, uh, those types. Um, they also check any text and images created using the text editor, but that's only, um, that content's currently only available in the course accessibility report. So alternative formats. These are the, the totality of the alternative formats that we can generate. Um, OCR version of PDFs, um, tagged PDFs for Word, PowerPoint, and OpenOffice or LibreOffice files, mobile-friendly HTML. So I know a lot of students are trying to do their coursework on their phones as much as we advise them to not do that. Um, but that's what they're comfortable with, and sometimes we just kind of have to go with what students are doing um, and the reality of that. So that might be something you want to point out to them. Hey, HTML, it's available. You can, you can open up HTML um, for this file so it's easier to read on your phone. Um, audio file, EPUB, electronic braille, and the Beeline reader. All right, so why audio? Um, the, all the audio alternative reads the text aloud to the student. Um, it also includes alternative description for images if they're provided. So that's why it's important that if you have, you know, a file that's uploaded and it's got images in there that you have alt text for those images because it will tell the student what those images are uh, as it's reading to them in this audio format. Um, the audio format is going to be an MP3. Uh, which is a compressed high quality sound file. It can be played on any computer or mobile device. Um, but why use audio? It benefits individuals with, with visual impairments. 
Um, but research has also proven that audio can increase learning. So audio might be a good option for students. Um, and they can use audio in, you know, uh, conjunction with the, the text version as well. Um, and this might also help our students who maybe for them English is their second language or third language or fourth language um, so that they can kind of follow along here and see at the same time. And then another uh, version is electronic braille. That's something else that um, is available. It creates a VRF file that can be read on a refreshable braille display, um, RBD, um, or other braille reading devices or within braille software. Um, so think of that as like a refreshable braille display is sort of a monitor-less computer. Um, they can connect to the internet, they can create documents, they can access calendars, they have a lot of the basic functionality that a computer has. Um, it can be a standalone device. It can also be connected to a smartphone, an iPad, a laptop. Um, most of them are limited to reading one line of Braille at a time. Um, audio might be excellent for reading comprehension, for example, but those who read Braille actually acquire higher literacy rates on, on average. Um, and with Braille users with visual impairment can get to know the spelling, the punctuation, the format of the text on the page. Um, so that's another option uh, for students and staff and faculty. Um, so Allies Accessibility Checklist is based on the web content accessibility guidelines and I will post the link to that. Um, let me see here. I'll post the link to that to the chat. Um, it's an international accessibility standard. Most of the legislation and legal requirements worldwide align with that standard. Um, and Ally, in addition to those standards, that checklist, it adds a number of additional checks on top of that that start to target more of the usability and the quality of the course materials. So let's talk about helping students succeed with Ally. So one thing that we want to do is promote Ally to students. Um, you know, if we don't do anything, they might see that little icon in there and they might click on it and they might see that there are alternative formats. But if we actually promote it to our students, um, they're more likely to use it. Um, maybe if we explain to them how to use it, um, why to use it, when to use it, all of those things might help them. The more formats that we can provide them our content, the better. Um, the more that they can kind of customize it to how they learn best or their particular circumstances for learning. Um, so we have this link to uh, that I posted to the chat um, for our communication toolkit. Um, this has a sample email announcement, optional syllabus statement, and some helpful links when we're promoting Ally to students. So I, we definitely recommend that we promote Ally to students, that we use this communication toolkit to do so, so you don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel. Um, let students know about, about Ally. Um, and then there's also this link here that I'll post too, and this is um, an overview of Ally for students. It talks about alternative formats. It talks about the Ally file transformer as well, um, and it gives them some resources to look into. So definitely promote it, um, explain why it might be useful to them, um, and then see how, how they use it, see whether that makes a difference. Um, we do have some incentives for promoting accessibility using Ally for instructors. So we have digital badges for promoting accessibility, and I'll go over that badging right now. So we've got the first batch is Fight for Good. This is a, a student-centered focus on accessibility. The easiest way to get started with Ally is to make sure that your syllabus is accessible and that your students are aware of those alternative formats. So again, check out that communication toolkit for resources to help you tell students about Ally. This badge, Fight for Good, has one level. No problem. Um, this uh, badge has one level. You just have to Upload your syllabus to your course, 
and the syllabus accessibility score needs to be 90% or higher. And you have to share information with your students about alternative formats, such as posting information in your Blackboard course, adding a statement to your syllabus, sending information via email, demonstrating it in class, however you want to do that. Start making sure that our, our syllabi are accessible. Um, that is the first document usually that our students in, interact with in our courses. And then we have three more badges. So we've got X-ray vision, super strength and detective work. X-ray vision is a focus on captions. Uh, captions are a critical element of accessibility for those who are deaf or hard of hearing, but they can also benefit all students. Um, each one of these badges has three different levels. Um, for this one, um, level one needs one of the following. You need to either edit captions on one video or multimedia pre presentation that you created, or replace a video or a multimedia presentation created by someone else in order to have accurate captions. Then you can move up to level two if all of the video or multimedia content used that were created by others have corrected accurate captions. So not just those auto captions. Um, and then level three, all video or multimedia content that you created had accurate edited captions, not auto captions. So you can always start with auto captions. Auto captions aren't a bad thing, but we want to make sure that those auto captions are accurate. So, you know, for example, we create a lecture video or a video demonstrating something for our students. We upload it to Kaltura. Kaltura generates auto captions. And we want to look through those auto captions. Uh, as we watch the video and make sure that they're accurate because if the captions aren't accurate they're not going to be very helpful for our students right um, so we want to make sure that they're as accurate as possible and we can edit those captions which we want to do um, super strength is the next badge and that lifts your overall accessibility score so your overall accessibility score is a good indicator of how accessible your course materials are as a whole. Um, so as you're improving the accessibility of your content, you're going to be lifting that overall score as well. This badge, like the other one, has three levels. So you can start off small and then build, build up. Um, level one, increase the overall accessibility score in one course by 10% or more. Level two, one course has an overall accessibility score of 80% or more. And then level three, one course has an overall accessibility score of 90% or more. And then the final badge with three different levels here is detective work. So that's finding and fixing accessibility issues. Um, so finding and fi fixing accessibility issues in our course materials requires, you know, this eye for detail. We've got three levels for this badge as well. Um, level one is making five or more fixes in one or across multiple courses. So it doesn't have to just be in one course. You make five fixes just total. Um, level two is making 10 or more fixes, and level three is making 20 or more fixes, or having no issues left to fix in a course. So sometimes maybe we don't even have 20 issues. Maybe we're like kind of a, a whiz at accessibility, and we've been working for a while on making more accessible content, and we don't have 20 or more fixes um, in a course. We have no issues left to fix in that course, then we would get level three here. And then our last badge is the Ally Hero badge. So when you've mastered all the superhero skills for accessibility, then you'll be an Ally Hero. So to earn this badge, you would have achieved all of the levels of the individual skill badges. Um, so you want to be, you have that Fight for Good, Super Strength 3, Detective Work 3, and X-Ray Vision 2 and 3. So the um, digital badges, there's more information on that. Let me grab that URL here um, and it'll show up on the next slide too, but I'll post that. Um, so if you go to our cital.niu.edu slash ally hyphen badges page, um, you can see more of the details and see all of these details again, because I'm, I'm sure you won't remember them all um, as I've just kind of breezed through the requirements for those, those ally digital badges. Um, 
but that's also where you can apply for a badge. So once you think, okay, I've got level, you know, one of the detective badge, um, and I want to apply for that, then you can go to this page and you can apply for that badge and we will review it, review your application, and then we'll award you that, that digital badge that you can share on LinkedIn and your social. Um, so again, here is that, that link up on the screen to cital.niu.edu slash ally hyphen badges. Um, some resources that I just wanted to share. Um, we have, there's a YouTube video on Blackboard Ally for Courses, and I'll share all of these um, with you in a follow-up email as well. There is some information on Blackboard Ally for LMS, um, Pathways to Inclusion, Climbing the Accessibility Leaderboard, which is another Blackboard um, resource there. Um, also, uh, a Blackboard resource on supporting first-gen students through inclusive course design. Um, so I know that's one of our, our efforts at NIU is supporting first-gen students. Um, Blackboard Ally for LMS, there's a data sheet as well. Um, there's also a course content accessibility data study that they've shared that you can take a look at um, for some important data on accessibility. Um, we have comprehensive documentation on Ally for both faculty and students. So I'll share that link with you. Um, I'll share the link again to the accessibility toolkit um, and some information on adding descriptions to images, which is important. That's one of the one of the things that pops up a lot is one of the top issues is, is uh, alt text for images or descriptions. Um, also on OCRing a PDF and improving contrast issues. So some of the, the three most common issues that faculty see in their course um, accessibility reports. Um, so I will take any questions as well, but thank you for joining me today to talk about Blackboard Alley to support accessibility in your courses. Um, and if you have questions afterwards, you don't have any right now, but you think of something later, you need help workshopping something or, or troubleshooting, feel free to contact me. Um, again, I'll send links to the resources that I mentioned in the previous slides in a follow-up email um, for all attendees um, who are here live so that you all have them. Um, but I will um, hope that you have a great weekend and a great semester.